For over 150 years, local newspapers have helped shape the communities we live in. They've been the birthplace of community discussion and a platform to keep government honest and accountable. They report our Little League and high school sports. They tell stories of the achievement and hope that surround us, as well as the stories of the tragedies we endure. They've told stories that have touched our lives. For some, the newspaper offers a chance to keep up with local events, and others, a platform to change the community they live in. A news organization is a reflection of where you live, your public officials, and a record of your community's history. Let's take a look at how community news organizations play a role in our lives today. Well, our, our mission is we are information providers. I mean, that's basically all we've ever been. Uh, the difference is, is that we have to maintain the high ideal of presenting credible, vetted information. And that's really what sets us apart from anybody else. Our job is to report what's happening in your own backyard. We are there um, to find the news stories that really matter to you living in that neighborhood, living in that community. In most cases we live here, we're part of it, we're accountable for everything that we write. Um, in my experience, virtually guarantee you that if I write something contentious about you, I'm going to run into you face to face within three days. It's happened to me in the post office, it's happened to me in church, it's happened to me in a variety of places and with that kind of accountability comes um, responsibility and I think a lot more care. The role of a community newspaper is to inform the public, uh, the, the residents of that community, about what is happening in their community and that ranges from everything from uh, the bridge construction and when that bridge is going to be shut down to stories about the local baseball team to stories about um, you know tragedies the the people who have lost their lives in their communities and the stories that they had and it also tells a story about the Twinkie decorating contest at the library and about the uh, sirens that were blaring on 3rd Street the other night. We easily for news in across all types of platforms um, there's a traditional newspaper there's websites and all kinds of mobile devices that people can access our news from. Um, we also work with social media and distribute news in that way. So pretty much wherever the, the primary ways that people are looking to get information, we're there providing it to them. I think a community newspaper, community no news organization's essential job is to cover their local community, to tell the people's stories, to tell their people government stories. It's um, truly, you know, of, by, and for the people. It's their newspaper. It's not mine. It's not my staff's. It's theirs, and we need to tell their story. In 2013, the Republican Eagle in Red Wing, Minnesota delivered 547 local government articles and briefs. 529 articles and briefs about the local school systems, 414 stories highlighting local people. There were 440 obituaries in 2013. 290 letters to the editor were published. Over 800 local sports stories were written and over 3,900 ads were displayed to local consumers. It truly is amazing how much information is provided to the community by having a local newspaper. Credibility, I think, is probably one of the most important things that any news organization can have. Credibility meaning believable, someone you can trust. We do everything on our power to present both sides of every story we write. We don't want biased information to hit the paper. We don't want unverified information to hit the paper. We do everything we can to tell each side of each story. A lot of people know each other in town. You know your neighbors. You know what's going on. But you don't know the stories sometimes from across town. You don't know the stories from the, our elected officials. Sometimes they tell you what they want you to hear. And it needs a reporter to do the digging, do the investigative reporting, and find out, is this story true? Is it not true? Is there more to the story that we really need to know? I think one of the greatest things that our forefathers did for our nation is to guarantee the freedom of the press. In our local newspaper, I've seen it here. And I think a lot of print media, newspapers in general, uh, and you know, national magazines, I think they take that rule seriously. I hope they do, and I think they do. 
I think that's part of the training process any journalist would go through. Um, uh, to be able to ask the tough questions of the local elected officials, to uh, be able to be transparent. And it is on my mind when I get interviewed by the, the local newspaper person, uh, to be able to make sure I give credible, accurate, factual information because I know that they're going to report it as such. There's a reason we sit in on these long meetings and it's to get the right information. There's a reason we ask the harder questions than I think just some person that wants to start writing on a blog. You know, we want to make sure that our readers are actually getting the most accurate information. Okay. Some of our smaller businesses that are very local, I mean their market is very much the local people that live in the community. That's one of the, probably the most important resources that they have is the local paper. So it's very valuable in that respect. I also know the business community looks at um, the issues, local issues that are, you know, having, they're going to have a huge impact on our community. You know, you like to have big stories and report big stories, uh, but sometimes the ones that have the biggest impact are uh, you know, something about, you know, a community member or a resident who, you know, has a significant achievement or an interesting story to share. Um, you know, telling the story of whether it was a World War II veteran and his spouse and how they got through those difficult periods or a cancer survivor or something like that. Those are stories that the uh, people of the community need to hear. Um, and I think it's really imperative, especially like cancer survivors, it gives other people hope. The local paper uh, uh, brings us together in a much closer way. I really feel that uh, a community without any media in it is just a cold community of people behind closed doors. And this really opens up the community a lot and we interact with each other and uh, uh, we grieve together, we have joy together and uh, it makes for a very rich community. Local news organizations deliver on their promise every day to keep their communities informed on what's going on and to tell their story. A strong community depends on good citizens to be informed and engaged in what's going on around them because decisions will be made not by those who have the time, but by those who take the time to be involved. The amazing story of your community is getting told every single day. There are many ways to be a part of that story and to support your community news. The, the biggest way to support a community newspaper is to consume it, to, to grab it, to read it, to look through it all, to share the stories with your friends, to, and then second, to look at those ads from those businesses and, and, and realize that those are all mom and pop community businesses for the most part and they should be supported. We definitely have a lot of people that are coming toward our um, Facebook page and our Twitter site. Definitely getting engaged that way is going to be the quickest way to get on our radar. Letters to the editor are another great tool. If there's something that's going on that we're just not seeing or that could be looked at more closely, definitely send us you know, a letter to the editor. Um, calls for thank you, this article was awesome, or calls to say, hey, this is what's going on. Keeping us engaged will help us keep you engaged. Obviously, when it comes to the political season, you have to be engaged, um, because if you don't do your own research and all you're doing is voting on uh, the mailers you get or the phone calls you get, you have to understand those are all one perspective. And if you want to get a well-rounded uh, feel for what's going on in the area of politics before you vote. You got to read your local hometown newspaper. It's uh, paramount uh, for people to get fully educated before voting. It's a social responsibility or a democratic responsibility. If you're you're part of a democratic republic like ours, you need to participate. In, and the newspaper is a good vehicle to inform. Uh, voters and, and good citizens about what's happening in their town. We see the biggest success stories, they don't happen just on the state level or a national level. We see the best success stories happen in your neighborhood. It has to start there. And to have a citizenry that's informed, that is wants to be engaged, wants to volunteer, wants to be involved with their school system, their business community, it's nothing but a healthy result at the end of the day.
The mission that of acquiring the information, vetting it, and making it credible, that hasn't changed. But what has changed for the better is how we deliver it. And uh, it's just uh, it's an exciting time for us in the newspaper business.